Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it is a multi-billion pound industry that offers to change the way you look. Private cosmetic surgery clinics are booming business. But how well regulated are they? And what happens if something goes wrong on the operating table? Well, tomorrow, the Royal College of Surgeons and the General Medical Council are to publish new training and standards guidelines. But Channel 4 News has been investigating what exactly happens to patients who have been left scarred and in pain. A warning, this report from our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald, does have pictures some viewers may find distressing. Disfigured, in pain and discomfort. From coming home from an operation, my life just stood still, stopped. There's nothing you can do, there's nobody you can claim from, and nobody will take responsibility. It's a journey no one should ever have to go on. The results of private cosmetic surgery gone wrong. I was covered in blood. And when I looked in the mirror, I seen I had a big hole in the tip of my nose. But since the operation, my eyes don't close properly. And basically, I tape my left eye closed every night. You could see the damage to them. This is the one you're having the pain in? Yep. Cosmetic surgery performed by doctors at private clinics. And in each case, the women have unsuccessfully fought to have put right what they claim were disastrous results. And now a Channel 4 News investigation has found the numerous barriers put in the way of patients seeking help or compensation. We have evidence of some clinics closing down, only for new ones to open up in the same building with the same staff, even the same phone number, of surgeons not having adequate insurance or disappearing abroad so they can't be sued, and of some serious buck passing when it comes to finding out who is responsible when there's been a problem. Rita Payton paid £3,500 to remove a bump in her nose. Her surgeon, Olufemi Adiogba, was a Nigerian who'd trained in Germany and had come to work in Liverpool. The clinic disputes her version of events, but this is what she believes happened. What he'd actually done is cut the tip of my nose off with a laser. Um, he'd cut too high up my septum, the underneath of your nose. He'd sliced my, nef my left nostril. And when I've been to see other surgeons, they don't know why he's done that, how that could have been done accidentally, anything. They don't know. Mrs Payton returned to the clinic several times and was given dermal fillers to replace the missing cartilage. But eventually her lung collapsed because she could not breathe properly. The clinic says her problems were the result of an infection and indeed her notes, which we have seen, show this did happen. Yeah, if you could see this one, yeah. But we spoke to the NHS surgeon who had the task of repairing the damage. Nothing is 100% black and white in medicine. However, we go on the, the probabilities and the probability or the likelihood of this as a result of infection is very, very low. Uh, as opposed to as a result of technical error, which is very high. So on the balance of that, I'm, I'm saying that it's probably a surgical error. To repair the damage, Mr Iqbal had to take part of Rita Payton's ribs and ear to put into her nose to hold it up. Despite his best efforts, though, it will never be perfect. Mr Adiogba is thought to have returned to Nigeria. Following complaints from Ms Payton and others, he is suspended from the UK's medical register. And the clinic? Well, it no longer exists. In 2008, when Mrs Payton had her surgery, it was called the Birkdale. By the time she came to looking at legal action in 2012, there was a new and entirely separate company called the New Birkdale. Same building, same front door, even some of the same staff. But as a completely new business, it cannot legally be held responsible for problems that went before, leaving Mrs. Payton with nowhere to turn. Morning. However, there is a link between the two companies, Promod Batnagar. He was co-owner of the Birkdale. When it went into receivership, his daughter Tara became the director of the new Birkdale. The managers who were with me for 15, 18 years, um, 
they said everything is running on autopilot tara you take over otherwise we'll all lose the job so she took it over at that time that was the reason for it no quite unusual though, isn't it? not really when it does go wrong yes there should be a very clear pathway there is and well, there is what what happens if you go and you try and sue the company and you find that that company has gone into the strategy well that happens occasionally or in how fact how many I would... times have you changed your company name <laughs> I haven't changed my company's name at all. The company went into liquidation when the bank put it into liquidation. So it was the Birkdale Clinic and now it's the new Birkdale Clinic. That is a completely different new business. And as for what happened to Rita Payton, this is what he said. It was a surgeon, infection and then the surgeon in that order. That was the the problem, right? What you was the problem with the surgeon? Because then the surgeon is trying to correct it and then it did not work out. We tried to contact Mr. Adiogba, but he did not respond. Every year, tens of thousands of people in the UK put themselves under the knife to take away the bags, sags and wrinkles. So what is the advice? Anybody wanting to have cosmetic surgery should ask themselves these questions. How safe is the procedure? What's the reputation of the clinic? What's their aftercare policy? Who takes responsibility if something goes wrong? After surgery to remove bags from under her eyes, Dawn Knight claims she is not able to close them properly. She's shown us this photo of her asleep. Dr. Arnaldo Pagnelli, who operated on her, was trained in Italy and did not, at the time, have adequate UK insurance. I did assume because he was a member of the GMC, that, he would, that they would hold current copies of the surgeon's insurances, which apparently they don't, <clears throat> and that he would have been, you know, it, that he would have been insured. Mr. Paganelli said in a statement, I believe that it is clear that the patient had an acceptable result. He added, I have never worked as a surgeon without insurance coverage. I found out after the fact that my insurance policy may have had some limits to its coverage in the fine print of some of the contract clauses. My new insurance policy provides me with full coverage. Really uncomfortable, you know. When Mrs Knight tried to take it up with the hospital group, they told her the surgeon was responsible. Eventually I was um, given some aftercare advice from my local um, op opticians and then from the ophthalmic surgeons at a local hospital um, and basically I tape my left eye closed every night, I put thick eye gel in every night and I have an alarm on my phone that every two hours from seven till nine at night goes off to remind us to put uh, eye drops in. The company that arranged Dawn Knight's operation was called the Hospital Medical Group Limited. Now they've recently gone into liquidation. However, we put her claims to them and received a response from another company, the Hospital Medical Group Holdings Limited, just one word difference. And they, to confuse things more, are trading under the name the Hospital Group. They said, We acknowledge that the aftercare is a shared responsibility between the surgeon and the clinic. Our evidence shows that aftercare was provided. They added that after three reviews of the case, all the evidence we have available directly contradicts the claim that Mrs Knight can no longer close her eyes. The health secretary has said repeatedly that private clinics have a moral duty to replace faulty breast implants free of charge. When the PIP scandal broke, Charlotte Belcher became concerned. Yep, it's a different texture. She had gone to a local cosmetic surgery company. But when she rang to say the implants were causing pain and she feared they'd rupture, it was no longer the same clinic. The lady explained they had closed down the day prior and now they had no liability um, for any of its previous patients. How a company can close down one day and reopen the following day with one word added to its name, but the same staff, same building, um, nothing had changed at all, not even the phone number. Charlotte has now paid to have the implants replaced, but scar tissue has caused problems and several times the wounds have torn open. The Royal College of Surgeons and the GMC will tomorrow launch a new scheme to tighten up training and standards. But they say the government needs to bring in new laws to regulate the industry, and this is backed by legal experts.
If you have a case against a clinic, quite often it won't be a case against the clinic, it'll be against the individual doctor. And if they disappear, that's really difficult. So legal changes are needed. The clinic should be responsible for all of their staff. The um, doctors should provide mandatory insurance. There should be um, close regulation of all clinics and all doctors. And perhaps this will happen in the future, but too late for the patients who spoke to us. Instead, they're left not just with scars, but with a sense of injustice. They'd trusted the clinics, the doctors, even the industry. And now they feel both abandoned and betrayed. Victoria McDonald reporting there. I've been getting away with it all.